The Carolina Panthers are one of the most fun and challenging teams to rebuild in Madden because they have players like Brian Burns, DJ Moore, Derek Brown, but they also don't have a running back and they don't have a quarterback. Or do they? Well, in today's video, we find that out. And huge shout out to Echo XP for the suggestion. Their link is in the description. Go drop them a sub. I already dropped them a sub, of course. But if you want a shout out just like that one, just let me know what team to do next. And I'll give you a shout out. I'll drop you a sub and I'll tell everyone else to go sub to you. It's a win, win, win. And also my last video did so ridiculously well. I think it's on pace to be my best performing video ever. So let's see if we can repeat that. I think we absolutely can. Just be sure sure to like sub. Let's shoot for 35 likes and let's see if we can get to 600 subs. I know we can do that. And of course, if you do that, it will make you an OG of the channel. And imagine if everyone did it, we would hit every goal like immediately. And you're part of that everyone, so be sure to do it. But that's enough plugging, long intro over. Let's get into today's video. All right, here we are with head coach Mikey, where is he? Hold on. There he is. Wait, doesn't he normally show up in this screen? Okay, yeah, what the fuck was that? Anyways, here we are with head coach Mikey McDingle, of course, taking a look at this Panthers team. Now, this is a pretty disgusting team, I'm not gonna lie. Obviously, the main talking point about this team is quarterback and just this gross offense in general. You have like four decent backup level QBs on the roster, but no true starter, and we're gonna do something fun in this one. We're gonna be starting Matt Corral at QB. Obviously, the Baker Mayfield experiment has not worked out here, and PJ Walker's a bit too old to work out for this rebuild, so I think Matt Corral is the best option. And hey, if he doesn't work out, we can easily just go and draft another QB. And obviously, this team has some pieces to build around, like DJ Moore. I like LaVisca Chenault a lot. I think our receiving core is good for the rebuild, with Terrace Marshall as well. On the offensive line, Austin Corbett, Taylor Moten, Iki Aquanu. Like, you have three players there that possibly will be here for the rest of the rebuild. And defensively, obviously, you have good players like Brian Burns, JC Horn, Dante Jackson, Shaq Thompson, Jeremy Chin, Derek Brown. Like, you, you have talent on this team. It's just gonna be about filling the holes pause in developing some of these younger high dev trait players. So without further ado, let's get into year number one of the rebuild. Of course, once again, like sub, 30 likes, 480 subs. I know we can easily do that. The support lately has been amazing, so thank you guys so much for that. I'm glad that the channel finally feels like it has momentum going again. And let's get to the mid-season point of year number one, but maybe with some trades. So just a little trade here. We're going to be trading Pat Elfline to the Jaguars for a four. Obviously, I mean, we're gonna have a bigger trade than this, but I just, it kind of makes sense. They kind of need a center. We don't need Pat Elfline. I like Bradley Bozeman a lot in real life, so Pat Elfline is going there. This is a good one, I think. So I know this isn't necessarily realistic, but we're gonna be trading Baker Mayfield for a three and a four from the Jets. Obviously, Zach Wilson has been horrible in real life, probably the worst starting QB, and he actually has a pretty damn good surrounding core around him, so he doesn't really have any excuses. I think he just kind of sucks. So we'll see what Baker Mayfield can do there, and we basically just get free picks because, I mean, he wasn't going to start anyways. I don't know if this will end up being huge, but it could be huge. Frankie Louvu, which, you know, I'm a Washington State fan, so you know I love this. He got the star dev trait, let's go, and 23 thousand XP? Good lord. What's he gonna go up to then? He gets two overall points. We have some huge upgrades here, by the way. Matt Corral, Iki Aquanu, and Frankie Luvu. Well then, um, at the midseason point of year number one, we are one in six. That's honestly not surprising. I, I am surprised for some reason, but I mean, you gotta remember this team is not good at all. I thought we would be a little better. I mean, look at the Falcons. They have a worse overall, but they're four and three while we're sitting at one and six. Literally, little disappointing. At least we're not like the Bears, though, at 0-7. But let's see... Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. God damn it. Let's see what the problem is. So Matt Corral, 1,600 yards, 12 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, only 56% completion percentage. Not great, but honestly not bad with the surrounding core. Deontay Foreskin is not doing super great. 3.3 yards per carry, 2 touchdowns. Iki Aquanu. So I switched Taylor Moten and Iki Aquanu because uh, they were each 
scheme fits if I flipped them. And I felt more safe with Taylor Moten as my left tackle instead of my right tackle. And I feel like I was uh, fair for thinking that. Because Ikki Okwanu has already let up six sacks at right tackle. I don't want to know what he would have done at left. So I think I made a good choice there. And for pressure, we're really not doing all that much. Three and a half sacks each from Brian Burns and Frankie Louvu. We have five picks from JC Horn already. He's doing even better here than he is in real life. You love to see it. And we have some re-signings here. So honestly, there aren't many players here that we need to re-sign. I'll re-sign maybe Bradley Bozeman, but he's already a bit older. He's 27. I guess that isn't super old, but he takes it. Okay. Matt Ioannidis, I like him a lot in real life, specifically with the Commanders. I don't like him as much now with the Panthers. He's not having the best year, but I have liked him a lot in the past. However, he's already 28. He's only a 75 overall. We can definitely upgrade there. We don't need to re-sign him. And honestly, I don't know who else we really even need to re-sign, period. Giovanni Ricci, I guess I could. Okay, he takes player friendly. I'm fine with that. He's a fun player, I guess. And I think we'll just let everyone else walk. So at the end of year number one, we unfortunately finish 5 and 12. But I feel like that's actually a good thing, surprisingly. Obviously, because we have so many draft picks this year. Now, in terms of stats, Matt Corral was uh, not amazing, but not bad. 4,300 yards, 30 touchdowns, 15 picks is a lot, 60% completion percentage. I mean, for real life, that would be amazing, but for Madden, it's iffy, it's fine. Deontay Foreskin was decent, almost 900 yards, 3.4 yards per carry, 6 touchdowns. We definitely need an upgrade. I don't know what I'm talking about saying that was decent. That was not good. 1,000 yards and 6 touchdowns for DJ Moore, almost 1,000 for LaVisca Chenault, almost 800 yards and 10 touchdowns for Terrace Marshall. Chuba Hubbard had a lot of receiving yards. Tommy Tremble was fine. 600 yards, four touchdowns. I do like Tommy Tremble a lot in real life. At least I did coming out of college. He's been kind of dog shit in the NFL, but hey, you, you can't win them all. So for blocking, it looks like I might have messed up uh, switching uh, Taylor Moten and Iki Aquanu. Taylor Moten let up 17 sacks. Iki Aquanu let up 13. But the rest of the line was amazing, and we have an addition to the all cast castration team. Austin Corbett let up zero sacks. That's actually extremely rare. I haven't had that in like months. So he is a welcomed addition to the all castration team. I think following Wyatt Teller and God, I don't know who else. I would have to look. But the rest of the line was also very good, especially Brady Christensen. Defensively, we had a ton of tackles. 142 for Shaq Thompson, 128 for Corey Littleton. Tackles for loss, we had 17 from Brian Burns, 15 from from Derek Brown, 10 from Matt Ioannidis. In sacks, we had 10 from Brian Burns, 6 from Derek Brown, 5.5 from Frankie Luvu. In interceptions, unfortunately, JC Horn does only get one more in the second half of the year, finishing with 6. 3 each from Shaq Thompson, Jeremy Chin, CJ Henderson, 2 from Dante Jackson, and 1 from a few players. So, I think it's always good when you have, like, clear weaknesses so you know exactly what you need to upgrade. It looked like tackle, maybe QB, definitely running back and pass rush were our biggest need. But QB wasn't even that bad, especially considering Matt Corral was only a, what, 68 overall? But here we have Tom Brady winning the MVP. That's actually kind of different, surprisingly. I don't really see that. Normally it's like Joe Burrow or Josh Allen or Lamar or someone. Unfortunately, no Panthers in here, but that's not surprising at all. Offensive player of the year goes to Saquon Barkley, another kind of interesting one. Cooper Cup down at five. Normally he wins it. No Panthers except for I guess Christian McCaffrey, but you know, not a Panther anymore. Aaron Donald wins Defensive Player of the Year per usual, while well, I guess either him or Nick Bosa are the two. Shaq Thompson at number eight. Okay, I'm surprised no JC Horn. Ooh, ooh, this changes things a lot. Matt Corral wins Rookie of the Year. Ooh, okay, I didn't think he would win it, but I always forget the A or the NFC has no rookie QBs that start. So if you're playing a rookie QB, they're pretty much guaranteed to win it unless they really suck or someone really goes off. No other Panthers, but I don't care. That's huge to win that. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Aiden Hutchinson. I don't know if we had anyone up here. Dane Belton is up there. Okay. How was he even starting? Was he playing like in the slot or something? I don't know. Or I guess the nickel, I should say. But no Panthers up here. But wow, that's crazy. I didn't expect him to win Rookie of the Year. I was thinking of it, but I was like, yeah, there's no way. He didn't have a good enough year and there's going to be a lot of competition. But I always forget there are no starting rookie QBs in the NFC. So that's huge. That really changes things here. It kind of sucks that I set my focus position to QB instead of
of like running back, which I was going to do. But hey, we can find a good running back. Let's get into the offseason and let's make this team better. Okay, interesting Super Bowl here. We have the California matchup, I guess. San Francisco versus Los Angeles. The 49ers win 31 to 14. I could see the 49ers being there. Definitely, they've looked very good lately. They just stomped the Cardinals yesterday in real life at the time of recording this, of course. And the Chargers have been disappointing this year. I thought they would be one of the best teams, but they've been mid. To be fair, they have been without some of their best players, and they're gonna be without Mike Williams for a while, it seems like, so it's gonna be tough for them, but I don't know why. I just, every year, I think the Chargers are gonna be good, and I'm just disappointed by them every single year. I don't know why I still pick them to be good, because I know some shit's gonna happen. I just feel like whenever I don't pick them is when they're actually gonna be good. So Chargers fans, I'll try to remember not to say the Chargers are gonna be good next year, because we all know what's gonna happen if I say it. Okay, so Matt Corral has an upgrade here. I wanna see if he got a dev trait. I really hope so. I would assume so, but you never really know. I mean, it's pretty much guaranteed if you win Rookie of the Year, right? Okay, yeah, he gets star dev. If he didn't, I would've legit forced it. I would not have cared. 26th ranked QB in the league. I'm surprised he's even that high at only a 72 overall, but he could end up being a true stud for us, so that's exciting. Ooh, JC went up to superstar. I went through that really quick, but that's huge huge too. In terms of re-signings though, I don't really think I'm gonna re-sign anybody. I don't really have a reason to, to be fair. Corey Littleton, I will. He was good last year and he got a dev trait. Assuming he re-signs, I'm fine giving him this much money. It's like six per year, just over six, I think. So I'm, I'm fine with that. And he takes it. Perfect. Other than that though, I mean, I, I don't know. I might re-sign some depth players, but that's boring. So let's get to free agency. So we're gonna go pretty hard hard in free agency. I'll just say that. Well, actually, I say that and then I realize, oh, I'm only going after three players. It felt like I offered a lot more contracts. I guess it's only three. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I guess we're not going that hard, but we're doing stuff in free agency. We'll say that. First one is going to be Kareem Hunt. Now, he should be a very good team or a very good scheme fit for our team, specifically because he is a good receiving back and this team really uses a receiving back. Clear because they're set up for Christian McCaffrey, even though they don't have him anymore, but it's still that same scheme in Madden at least. So he should be getting a ton of catches, a ton of runs, like he should be doing borderline like offensive player of the year. I think he was up there in my last rebuild, don't quote me on that, but uh, go find out for yourself. Watch to the end of this video and click on it on the end screens if it shows up. Smile. Um. Anyways, we're also going for Irv Smith for an upgrade at tight end. I do like him him in real life or I like what he could be he is more of a like receiving tight end obviously more than a blocker or anything is still only 25 in for agency here so this should be a fun one if he signs and Greg Gaines we need an upgrade at defensive tackle and he's decent he's only 27 he has star dev he, he won't be anything special but he could be a decent defensive tackle and at the very least will be a third defensive tackle in the future if we find an upgrade so I like all three of these moves we're in the lead for all three we don't have much competition for any of the three. Let's see if they sign. And they all three sign. They all three sign with us. Let's go. We have the fifth year for Derek Brown. I mean, this is kind of a no-brainer. He's been a stud this year in real life. Huge breakout. One of the bigger not-so-talked-about breakouts of the year. He's been a monster. So that's a no-brainer. Pick up his fifth year. And we have another one. Is this going to be like Harris Marshall? Oh, CJ Henderson. We get his fifth year? Is that how that works? Um, I'm not going to pick that up because, I mean, he's not that good, but I did like him coming out. The Jags just kind of gave up on him for no reason, so that was annoying, but hey, I'll definitely take him in this rebuild, you know what I'm saying? So again, as I was saying, the bright side about sucking in year one, pause, is that we have the number five overall pick. My Seattle Seahawks, unfortunately, have the number one overall pick, or I guess fortunately, however you want to look at it, but let's see what we're going to do with this pick. There are a lot of good QBs here, which makes me kind of want to go with one, but I'm not going to. I'm probably going to end up regretting that, to be fully honest with you, because I don't know if Matt Corral is going to repeat his success, but we're going to hope that he does. It looks like the guy I was going to go with 
Smith got taken, which is weird because he was a little lower down the board, but literally the year that we don't need a QB, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven first round players. That's fun. This guy does look pretty good, William Moss. He's 6'3", 261 out of FAU, so a smaller school guy. He has good speed, I guess. Not great strength with only 26 reps. Elite change of direction, which is interesting. A awareness, A finesse moves, A pursuit. I like that a lot. However, I don't love the block shedding. Play rec is a B. I don't know what his tackle is. I wouldn't guess it's great based off of his block shedding. I don't know. That guy seems risky. I guess I don't really know what else to go with, so I'm gonna go William Moss. He does have hidden. Okay, huge. No matter what, he has a hidden dev trait. Obviously, Yaturgros Matos hasn't really worked out. I have a hard time saying his name. Is it Yaturgros Matos? Mot I'm gonna say Yaturgros Matos. We'll go with that. But William Moss looks like a solid player. 83 speed, 81 strength. Nothing necessarily blowing me away with his athleticism, but should prove to be a good player. And hopefully a nice complimentary piece to Brian Burns. This guy is interesting. Nicholas Allen. He's 6 foot, 186, 21 years old out of Alabama. So hey, maybe that's dangerous to take an Alabama deep threat. We all know what happened to the last one. But he ran a 4-3-1 at the Combine. Has elite acceleration and agility. Great speed. So not quite elite, but great. And he has a deep route, which is interesting. Typically, if you see a deep threat past like, you know, like the top four receivers or something, it's like a B for their deep route if they're a deep threat. But this guy has A. So that's very interesting. Obviously not very good in anything else, but not terrible in anything else either. And the last guy I took that looked like this ended up being like a 77 overall. I don't necessarily think Nicholas Allen will end up being that good because that guy had like a 4-2-4 at the combine. This guy isn't quite as fast and I guess not quite as good in general, but he should be a decent player. If I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna guess he's gonna be like a 72 overall with normal, but I'm just hoping for better. So let's take him and he has hidden. Okay, huge. 94 speed, you love to see it. Mikhail Chamberlain, what kind of name is that? Mikhail? That's kind of gross. I've only heard that name like once before. I tried to figure out who it was, but I, I couldn't find it. Anyways, this guy looks good. He's like a projected undrafted QB, Alex Weber. Solid throw power, okay speed, decent strength. I just like his uh, passing attributes. A, throw under pressure, solid accuracy. It looks like he could be good. I'm obviously not going to take him now, but I'll think about him later on. I don't know for sure if this guy's going to be good, but Jonathan McCoy, he's only 21 years old out of West Virginia. He ran a 4-4-5 at the Combine as a linebacker, elite speed, obviously. I'm intrigued by the A awareness, A man coverage. He was one of my um focus scouted players because I he had like A zone coverage. It ended up being a B, which is still good. And he had like A to C tackle. Apparently it was a C. Doesn't look like a very good run defender, but looks like a good cover linebacker at the very least. So let's take him. And he has hidden. We're knocking this draft out of the fucking park, dude. Not exactly a scheme fit. Obviously, as a cover linebacker, we run three run defenders, I think our scheme has in it. So not a scheme fit, but is very fast. Obviously, 91 speed. Looks like a really good player. And with the last pick, I think I'm going to take before I just sim it out. We're going to go Greg McMichael. It's a funny name to me, McMichael. I don't know why I'm picking on every player's name in this draft. I, I'm just in a hateful mood, I guess. Um, But Greg McMichael looks pretty good. 6'2", 187, 21 years old. I feel like every player has been 21 years old out of Oregon. He ran a 4-4-5 at the Combine, 16 reps on the bench, 4-4-1 at his pro day. That's interesting. And he doesn't look amazing. He has C-man coverage, B-tackle, uh, only D-zone, but looks... I, I just picked like the best looking corner because we need a fourth corner, so he's going to be the pick. And he has normal dev, unfortunately, but could be a good overall. Okay, this might be one of the best drafts I have ever had, and it could not come at a better time. So we'll start off with William Moss. He's a 76 overall, 82 finesse moves, 83 speed, 81 strength. Looks very good. Should be very good paired with Brian Burns, obviously. Now it's going to get a little complicated when you factor in the fact that we have Frankie Louvu and Yaturgros Matos, so I, I don't know. But he will probably play at edge over both of them. Nicholas Allen is better than I thought he would be. He is a 75 overall, 94 speed, bald as hell, 79 deep route, 81 spec catch. Looks like a really good player. 96 agility, good change of direction. Just looks really nice. Jonathan McCoy is a 71 overall. Not quite as good as I thought he would be, but well, I'm surprised he's even a 71 because he's not, he doesn't have the best zone or man coverage ever. He's just fast. He has good tackling, decent hip power. 
power okay pursuit but i mean he's not a bad overall at all actually i want to see something real quick i always do this at safety he would be a 73 you know we might do that actually that doesn't sound like too bad of an idea because we have xavier woods there he's not the best overall i do like him in real life but yeah he's not the best overall he's already a bit older i think i might play jonathan mccoy in the as the sub linebacker this year and just develop and develop develop him into the eventual starter that would be super cool if i could speak and even greg michael i wasn't sure about him but he is a 71 overall obviously no dev trait but yeah he's even better than i thought he would be and i took these few picks right here i took these i took three of these four i accidentally sim simmed this pick right here because we had back-to-back -back picks and i didn't realize that but let's start with ramon sheldon he's a 75 overall he's a slot receiver i never really pick slot receivers but i realized he had a catching and a catch in traffic so i was like ooh. everything else was like an f that i saw obviously a short route wasn't but like most other things were an f but he still is a very good receiver so that's interesting it seems easier to draft slot receivers than i thought john dale is a 70 overall i don't think he had a dev trait no he didn't but he's a better overall than i thought he would be after i took him i was like oh that might have been a miss but no he actually looks decent he had like 39 reps on the bench has 94 strength so that's nice jeremiah trent i don't know i just sim that pick and then alex weber is the qb i was gonna take only a 64 i was hoping you'd be a little better but i mean he's just gonna be a backup anyways i just thought i would take it just in case he ended up being a stud but he's just a backup and then i simmed the rest of that out it looks like it took a 69 overall receiver nice our receiving core is like loaded now we have no need for any other receivers we are good we were honestly good beforehand like receiver was a good position for us but now it's like we have too many here is a look at the team going into year number two of the rebuild and we have already kind of turned this thing around pretty well already i said already twice this receiving core is disgusting i mean our number five receiver is a 76 overall like 22 years old with a hidden dev that's ridiculous i'm having a hard time knowing who to start though because sure terrace marshall and lavisca chanel are already a higher overall than these two but alan and sheldon are both younger and could have a better dev trait so I'm kind of tempted to start them. I think I might. I know I literally said at the intro of this video that we have our like receiving core with more Chenault and Marshall, but uh, apparently I lied because we're going to throw those two in there and see how that goes. And then defensively, almost everything is the same, except we're going to be adding in William Moss at defensive end. He's a 76 overall. Obviously, I mean, we've already been over him. He's a good player. And I mean, I think that's literally it. No, we're adding Greg Gaines. I forgot we're adding Greg Gaines. That's the other difference. I knew there was something else. Also, we're going to play Jonathan McCoy as the sub linebacker, hopefully develop him into a very good safety. And yeah, I'm excited for this year. So let's get to the midseason point of year number two, and hopefully we can do well. Now that's a lot better. At the midseason of year number two, we are sitting at four and three. So it looks like Matt Corral so far was a good choice to stick with. 1,700 yards, 16 touchdowns, only five picks. Better completion percentage is doing well. Corral Kareem Hunt, 6.6 yards per carry, are you kidding me? 771 rushing yards through like probably 7 games, yes yeah, 7 games, that's crazy. And Nicholas Allen, 500 yards already, 5 touchdowns, he's a monster. I didn't think he would be the one that's doing well just as our number 2 receiver. Typically you know the number 2 receiver doesn't really do much, it's the slot receiver and then the number 1 receiver. Uh, They're both tied with 333 yards and 3 touchdowns, that's weird, that's really weird okay apparently three is the lucky number maybe year number three will be a super bowl win you never know but let's check out some of the re-signings we have here we're coming off a win against the buccaneers which is cool we have 79 mil to work with but that's because we have a lot of players to re-sign so brian burns he was good last year he's gonna ask for a lot more than he is necessarily worth in terms of performance that sentence didn't really make sense but you know what i mean we'll go neutral but i want him for like five years not negotiating not negotiating on the years up it or move on i'm at five years okay so he just wants more years that should be fine shaq thompson he was very good last year i am fine with going even player friendly that's only like 10 mil per year i'm fine with that jeremy chin is not interested in re-signing we're probably gonna have to go very player friendly which again is only about 10 per year so i'm fine with that and he doesn't want it okay i might not even re-sign him he's only an 82 overall so it's not really the end of the world if we don't get him back frankie louvu we'll go 
We'll go player friendly. That's about almost 10 per year. It's like nine something per year. I need a bigger offer to overcome. Dude, everyone's so picky. LaVisca, we really don't need, honestly. I'm not gonna resign him. Then CJ Henderson, he's still only 24. I wouldn't mind paying him like six to seven per year and he takes it. Okay, cool. So apparently everyone's just really picky except for those who obviously resigned, but let's sim a week. I'll try to resign Brian Burns at the very least. Actually, we don't really need LaVisca Chenault. Why does it do this? Why is it always just players? It can't be like picks. This is not realistic. Player for player trades straight up with no picks never happen. I seriously can't can't tell you the last time a player for player trade has happened with no picks involved. The Steelers have Alan Lazard and Andrew Wingard. Why did they pick them? Whatever. We'll take this one for a Caleb Evans and a third round pick from the Vikings. Sounds good. Ooh, Tyquan Thornton's a free agent. Why? And why does he only have 95 speed? Well, I guess he didn't break the uh, 40 time record. He ended up running like a 4-3-1 or something, which was way off from the like 4-2 they clocked him in at. But I mean, he he's still faster than 90 whatever speed 95 and honestly I'm just gonna cut a Caleb Evans we he's the worst corner on our team so it's like we got a fourth round pick and that's it or third and actually I'm realizing that fourth round pick or third is in a year that we probably won't be doing this rebuild still it's next year so I'm gonna trade this for as much value as I can get this year okay it goes through for a four from the Bengals this year I'm cool with that well that's quite the collapse now isn't it um we finished the year seven and ten and the worst part about that is this is a very like easily winnable division the falcons were the best team at only nine and eight everyone in this division was literally mid everyone was just around 500 even though 500 isn't really possible anymore unless you get a tie which is interesting to think about i mean it's hard to be 500 which i kind of don't like but hey it is what it is good lord matt corral was insane 4700 yards 39 touchdowns 15 picks is still a lot but you kind of take that 65 com percent completion percentage. I wish I could speak. Kareem Hunt was good, but he definitely was worse in the second half of the year. 1,400 yards, almost 1,500s, or 1,500, only five yards per carry, which I say only, that's still good, but like he was at 6.6. .6. I guess it's hard to stay at that good of a level, but still. In 12 touchdowns was obviously a massive pickup. Very happy with that. Nicholas Allen with 1,100 yards and nine touchdowns. DJ Moore with just over 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns. Ramon Sheldon with 843 yards, seven touchdowns. Kareem Hunt, potential offensive player of the year, 790 yards through the air and eight touchdowns as well. And then Irv Smith, 684 yards, five touchdowns. So yeah, that's a potential offensive player of the year for Kareem Hunt. I actually don't see a world where he isn't at least like top three, top two. Blocking was much better this year, specifically from Iki Aquano. He was a stud at right tackle, only allowing six sacks. Now Brady Christensen at left guard, six sacks allowed. That's not as good, clearly. I mean, left guard is a hard position to play, obviously. Not as hard as tackle, obviously, but for Madden terms, at least they do let up quite a few sacks, so six isn't terrible. Three from Austin Corbett, a step down from a zero last year, and Bradley Bozeman has been very good, only let up two. Shaq Thompson led the team in tackles with 132. Very nice. 21 tackles for loss for Brian Burns. Derek Brown with 13. William Moss with 12. Shaq Thompson with 10. And then sacks, 14 and a half from Brian Burns, and I'm realizing now I forgot to re-sign him. I am stupid. Derek Brown with 10, seven and a half for William Moss as a rookie. Potential defensive rookie of the year? I doubt it. I bet someone had like a monster year. Typically you see those uh, year one because there are just more rookies coming in. You know, the rookies are typically better than the players already in the game. So they're going to fill out a lot of those holes. Pause. So yeah, I don't know if he'll win that, but we'll see. And interceptions were way down. We had four, five, six, seven in total. Two from Jeremy Chin it two from CJ Henderson and one each from Jonathan McCoy, JC Horn, and Dante Jackson. JC Horn had like six last year down to one this year. That's not great. He allowed 59 catches. That's uh, quite a few. Interesting. Also, Dante Jackson was very bad. He could be a potential trade because yeah, he was terrible. We were seventh in offensive yards. Our defense must have been terrible. Also, 6699 at nice. Yeah, defensive yards, we were 22nd. Ninth in points scored, so pretty good. And then points allowed.
out probably yeah number 24 okay that sucks Jalen Hurts wins MVP that's a cool one I've never really seen that no Justin Herbert up here that's interesting I feel like there are a lot of names missing from here I can't put my finger on who it's a weird list this year Russell Wilson in there that's something player of the year goes to Cooper Cup oh, god damn it dude Kareem Hunt at number two <sighs> okay that sucks I was gonna say I don't see a world where Kareem Hunt doesn't win it but I'm glad I didn't commit to that and say it I just said I can't see a world where he's at least top three and I was right on that but yeah Zach Pascal on the Packers up there at number 10 I could see him signing there because they just love their like replacement level receivers defensive player of the year goes to Nick Bofa Aaron Donald at two Brian Burns at three okay okay what okay is what I meant and it looks like a rookie's up there so it looks like we're not gonna win defensive rookie of the year offensive rookie of the year goes to JT Agnew I'm guessing a QB from the Buccaneers he was up there for MVP so he must have been very good Ramon Sheldon at number seven I don't know what he did this year I didn't really even check his stats wait no he was pretty good right I'm surprised he's all the way down here and then yeah Dennis Groves wins defensive rookie of the year William Moss at number three Jonathan McCoy at number six so no awards we got close on a lot of them just not good enough but let's get to the offseason and try to make a strong push for the third and final year of the rebuild oh shit actually at the time of recording this I'm already at 580 subs so I might need to up that goal a little bit let's go for um 590 I guess I think that's very hittable because I'm guessing we're gonna be close by the time this video goes up I might I, if we're at 590 then I'll shoot for 600 which would be huge to hit but anyways <laughs> I appreciate all the support lately like crazy I didn't know if we could hit that goal of 1k by the end of the year but we're definitely on the right track Anyways, though, in the Super Bowl, we have the Cowboys taking down the Chargers. The Chargers are going to pull a Bills and lose back-to-back -back Super Bowls. I mean, unfortunately for the Bills, it was back-to-back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. But hey, the Chargers are on the right track, that's for sure. Also, the Packers video I uploaded is going crazy, so thank you for that. I very much appreciate that. Again, like and subscribe if you haven't already. 30 likes, uh, fucking 590 or 600. I'll stop plugging, I'm sorry. But I'm just very happy with how things are going, and I'm happy you people are like, in the videos but we have some re-signings here brian burns got x factor if we don't get him back i seriously might cry we'll go seven years and he takes it okay good thank god and jeremy chin goes up to x factor what was wrong with him he just said he didn't like it or something i don't remember fully what it was but he takes that okay beautiful frankie luvu i don't think i ever even offered him one or yeah i did we'll go player friendly once again we'll see if he takes that and he doesn't okay honestly that might be fine even when he had his breakout year he wasn't like a monster or anything he was just solid I'm honestly pretty fine with letting him go even though my Washington State bias does kind of want to take control here I don't know if I'm gonna like tag him or anything I'm definitely not gonna tag him he's gonna be like 25 mil a year yeah 20 wow I almost got that right on the dot 24.9 that's weird I might re-sign him in free agency to be honest but I don't think I will necessarily Yeter Gross Matos definitely not he hasn't been very good everyone else I think I'm just gonna let walk and let's get into free agency. We had a bit of a uh, shit defense, so we're gonna try to fix that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to fix that. Let me just tell you that. We're going all defense in free agency here for stud players, Miles Jack, Jalen Johnson, Ed Oliver, and Jordan Brooks. This is a very stacked free agency too. I mean, it show we have Nick Bosa, Justin Herbert, Rashawn Gary, Mike Evans, Evans, Chidobe Awuzie, MVP, Jalen Hurts, like he won MVP and they're just like, yeah, we don't need him. Like, has that ever happened before? Has someone won MVP and went to the, went to a different team in the same offseason? I don't think so. Maybe with like Peyton Manning? No, because he like, was he out for a year with like a hurt neck or whatever? I don't know. That was before my time watching football. <laughs> like a year before my time, but before my time. And I don't even think he won MVP, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, though, we are leading for all these players except except Miles Jack. The Jaguars are tied with us, and he's not interested, so honestly, he might not sign with us, but even if he doesn't, we're going for Jordan Brooks. Actually, you know, I'm gonna withdraw on both of these real quick, and I'm gonna mess with the contracts a little bit. Okay, I offered him a lot of money, and it really didn't move. I don't know if it's, like, capped if they're really uninterested in you, like, it can't go up to a full 
couple five stars or five i feel like they should change those to stars just because i don't know what to call it but and eh, no it's fine i think it looks cool but either way let's see if any of these players sign right off the bat so it looks like both of the linebackers sign do they sign with us jordan brooks does miles jack it appears does not and in free agency there's some interesting stuff nick bosa on the giants which he's not a scheme fit for at defensive end but okay rashawn gary on the Bengals, which again he's not a scheme fit for at outside linebacker mike evans to the titans they add another old receiver miles jack goes back to the jaguars okay jalen hurts to the falcons trayvon diggs to the jags i need up as overall in my rosters i just haven't really gotten to the cowboys yet noah fant to the Colts, same with Kyle Duggar, Jedrick Wills to the Jags, interesting free agency, but we obviously do sign Jordan Brooks, that's cool, and we're still in, never mind, we're not in the lead for Ed Oliver anymore, but we are tied for the lead for Ed Oliver, so let's see if either of these two sign, Jalen Johnson or Ed Oliver, Ed Oliver signs, is it with us? Of course not, and Jalen Johnson does not sign, and now we're losing for him, okay, this was a disaster of a free agency so far, and in the week that we sim, uh, he signs with the Steelers before I I could even like offer him another contract there's literally nothing i can do about that i mean i guess i could have upped the money before i simmed but i always forget that they do like one in between the weeks for whatever reason even though it's not like a period i, I don't get it that's dumb as hell okay so the next players we're gonna go for um are gonna be christian wilkins patrick queen naheem hines we're not gonna get patrick queen i can already tell you because we are tied and we all know that does not end in us getting the players christian wilkins we're in the lead but who knows if he'll accept it and Naheem Hines were in the lead but he'll probably accept it uh we just need a second receiving back we don't really need one but we have money and I don't know what else to do with it so you might as well spend it they all three sign and yeah I called it Wilkins signs with us Hines signs with us but of course Patrick Queen signs with Seattle. Also, I think this is coming out the day after Thanksgiving, so a uh, happy late Thanksgiving, I guess. I'm guessing all my viewers are from the US, because I mean, literally this sport. But hey, if you're not, uh, sorry, I guess. Sorry, I, I don't know. <laughs> but we have the number 10 overall pick. The San Francisco 40 Winers have the number one pick. Let's get to our pick. Why is my controller disconnecting? This is so freaking epic, dude. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm gonna go with here i mean this is a pretty complete team i could go a linebacker or a safety i guess or maybe offensive line i Mm, I don't know. Ooh, this guy looks really nice. Hold on. I think we're gonna go Deshaun White. He's six foot, 241, 22 years old out of Michigan State. He ran a 445 at the combine, 438 at his pro day. Both of those were first for linebackers, has elite speed, obviously. And his attributes, his stats, or whatever you wanna call them, are not bad either. A zone, A play rec, maybe A awareness, B block shed, hip power, tackle, probably B man coverage, maybe B pursuit. Like, he looks like a good player he's probably too good to be true he's probably gonna have normal dev but let's take him okay no he has hidden he has 90 speed i'm surprised he's not even faster at least like 92 even 93 speed but hey i'll take it he looks like a stud and the crazy thing is it, wow that was a terrible sentence the crazy thing is picking him at pick number 10 was a reach technically like he was projected first to second we took him early first i, I don't know not really important just thought i would point that out god damn if my controller disconnects one more time, I'm gonna fucking scream. I guess we'll go Corey Boner, Corey Bonner, but Boner because I'm immature. He was first, at least for the players le left, in bench press, vertical jump, broad jump, three cone, and 20 yard shuttle. He only has elite strength, not elite for anything else, but he's at least very good at the other things. He has B awareness, A impact block, run block, finesse, lead block. He's not a very powerful dude, but that's perfectly fine. Let's take him, and he has hidden as well. Only 92 strength, that's a little surprising, considering he had, what, 39 reps, but he still looks like a very good guard. Oh god, Tyson McCaffrey, is that another fucking McCaffrey? He kind of looks like him, too. That's kind of weird, actually, because there was obviously Ed McCaffrey, and then Christian, and... Who was the other McCaffrey? It was like a receiver, right? Max McCaffrey. There's also Luke McCaffrey and Dylan McCaffrey. I think Luke McCaffrey sounds familiar, too, but not so much Dylan. I, I don't know. Bro, you know what would be terrible? Being like the least successful brother of like a famous, really good family, like uh, the Eli Peyton Manning, like their third brother, or like if there was another 
another Watt brother. I guess Derek Watt, but he's still literally in the NFL and a good fullback, so it's not that bad. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like that would just kind of suck. Be like, damn, bro, I could have been that. This got really deep for no reason. Anyways, why do all these safeties suck ass? Actually, this, ooh, this guy might be decent. Uh, A Pursuit, you love to see that. Not good play rec, a good block shed. Brian Anderson, let's go. Normal dev, okay. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what else to do, so I think I'm just gonna sim it out. Here is a recap of the draft. Uh, we did well. We did well. However, the CPU, uh, not so much. Other than one player, they did pick a good player. But anyways, Deshaun White is a 75 overall at outside linebacker. At middle, he was only a 73, but he went up when we moved him outside. He's really fast, has... 70 zone which is surprisingly very good for a linebacker at least a see like a drafted one typically they'll have like a zone coverage and it'll be like 65 or something he's good block shedding well decent block shedding decent tackling he's another one of those players where i'm like i'm surprised you're so high of an overall they're just really fast Corey boner is a 74 overall 92 strength but somehow no power 90 impact blocking he doesn't really make a lot of sense i mean 92 2 strength, 90 impact blocking, and 66 run block power. That's a very contradictory stat line, to say the least. Brian Anderson is not very good. Uh, he's a 66. However, I'm not surprised. Everyone else here is pretty much irrelevant. They're not really going to get any playing time, except for Manny Mullins at a 74 overall. He's just a pure run stop. He has 97 strength. I wish I could have seen that uh, bench press. It was probably like 45 or something. Not even that slow he is 67 speed but considering he's a literal bowling ball 6'2 332 i mean that's not that bad really good play rec for a rookie awareness not so much so that doesn't make a lot of sense but decent tackling just a very good run defender so we had a pretty good draft filled out the rest of our needs i'm happy with it all right here is a look at the team going into the third and maybe final year of the rebuild depending on if we make the playoffs or not it's maybe the worst team i've ever gone into year number three with but it's still not terrible obviously we have studs like kareem hunt dj moore and actually nicholas allen has superstar x factor um you might have seen that whenever i or when i went over the roster for the draft trying to figure out who i was gonna pick but yeah it looks like he just straight up had that he didn't earn it or anything he just straight up had x factor so i'm very glad i started him and sheldon actually had superstar so we definitely made the right choice there tight end is still iffy for us uh irv smith is only a 77 tommy trembles a 73 but we don't even use the tight end much anyways so it's fine the offensive line is very solid it has performed very well outside of the tackles and even last year the tackles were much better obviously we're adding Corey bonner aka Corey boner because i'm immature he looks very good and then defensively the biggest question mark is at safety in jonathan mccoy because he's only a 75 but I do expect him to do well and hopefully develop at least a bit past Xavier Woods. We obviously have studs too here, or studs here too, like Brian Burns, Derek Brown, JC Horn, Jeremy Chin, Shaq Thompson, I think you could call one. And this team is still like ridiculously young. We only have like one, two, three, four, five players here that are like 26 or older, probably like three that are 27 or older. So it's still a ridiculously young team in general. Our offense is a touch older, but our entire receiving core is very young. Matt Corral is young. Our tight ends are still young. Most of our offensive line is pretty young, or at least some of it. Like, this is still a very young team. But without further ado, let's get to the mid-season point of year number three, and let's see how we're doing. Okay, that's what you love to see. At the mid-season point, we are five and two. Now, we are coming off a loss to the Eagles, only by one point, so we could easily be six and one. But hey, I'll take it. We have some upgrades here as well. I'm just happy with how we're doing i was worried we weren't gonna make the playoffs this year nicholas allen and john dale we have a trade offer for terrace marshall i mean i have no reason to do that unless there's like some stud player in here for no reason um i could get why is Dion jones still on the falcons i need to update my rosters sky Moore. nah i'm good why would they even do that they're the same overall and i think terrace marshall's older i i don't know not that we're really gonna need to but i'm kind of curious who is gonna be in here for the re-signings Ooh, whoa we have eh, it's actually not too bad. I thought it was going to be terrible, but it's only one 
two like starters and then I guess our kicker and punter so that's four but I mean I'll just re-sign Derek Brown just to do it and he takes it just in case we somehow miss the playoffs but speaking of that let's get to the end of your number three I hope we don't collapse we very well might because it is Madden all right so real quick before I reveal how we did just be sure once again to like and subscribe and let me know what team I should do next because I mean if you've made it all the way here obviously you have enjoyed this video I know I always say that but like it's true so I would very much appreciate if you did that because I'm really trying to grow this channel I've been there I've been very thankful with how it is going I appreciate you guys a ton and I really do hope y'all are enjoying these interesting videos and turn on notifications as well uh, it really helps out and it'll let you know when I upload my video Ooh, plus four catch in traffic goddamn okay but let's reveal how we did this year so I'm not gonna lie when I first saw it I kind of dookied myself a little bit I thought we missed the playoffs because I saw this screen I didn't see a team to go against in the playoffs but we got a first round bye. now it's not the most impressive the uh, NFC must have been really mid this year really just terrible not even mid just awful how does 11 and 6 mean the best record in the NFC well I guess the Packers tied with us but I guess we just had a tiebreaker I don't know but let's see who we're gonna be taking on in the playoffs super quick I will show the stats for the year though it's gonna be the 49ers at 9 and 8 but let's see how we did this year so Matt Corral was pretty good 4200 yards 35 touchdowns 11 interceptions just all of his stats are kind of down but I guess that's a good thing with the interceptions I don't know it was a good year for sure 66% completion percentage I'm happy with how he worked out he ended up being pretty good much better than his overall shows he's been like a top QB in the league low-key Kareem Hunt was a monster 1600 yards 5.1 yards per carry is good for sure and 21 touchdowns Jesus 1200 yards and 12 touchdowns from Nicholas Allen Irv Smith was our second receiver with 700 yards five touchdowns DJ Moore was 704 Kareem Hunt was 703 these three players were only three yards different in in total no that's not the right thing to say um they were just three yards apart Irv Smith with 718 DJ Moore was 716 and Kareem Hunt was 715 that's kind of weird and then Ramon Shelton had 600 yards and nine touchdowns he didn't do as much as I was hoping for but eh, it's fine Ooh, our blocking was horrific Taylor Moten with 18 sacks allowed Corey Boner with 10 that's a lot it looks like we downgraded from Brady Christensen but hey it is what it is Iki Aquanu is a stud I highly recommend playing him at right tackle in this game or just in general I don't know how he performs at left Austin Corbett was decent and Bradley Bozeman was very good defensively Deshaun White led the team in tackles as a rookie with 115 tackles for loss Derek Brown with 19 Brian Burns with 18 William Moss and Christian Wilkins with 14 and Deshaun White with 10 he had a monster year to be honest sacks 13 from Brian Burns outside of him not much seven from William Moss four and a half from Christian Wilkins and only two and a half from Derek Brown that's kind of surprising interceptions were horrific three from JC Horn two from Deshaun White and one from Shaq Thompson and that's it we had six in total honestly I might make some benches before the playoffs here <laughs> this was terrible Jeremy Chin really didn't do a lot for us in this rebuild I'm not gonna bench him but he has not been very good it looks like he allowed 26 for or 28 for 30 yeah it looks like he got targeted 30 times allowed 28 catches maybe there were some drops in there I don't know I wish it showed the exact like exact stat line oh and fumbles I never checked these only one on the year from Jeremy Chin in one fumble recovery so yeah I don't know we were 17th in offense I don't know how we went 11 and 6 that's not very good in seventh for defense we must have had a really good defense even though we didn't get many turnovers or sacks ninth in points scored and 10th in points allowed okay we, we just didn't allow uh, many points and we scored a decent amount hmm Dak Prescott wins MVP okay then Trey Lance up there Patrick Mahomo Gino the goat up there but no Panthers unfortunately however Kareem Hunt does win offensive player of the year you love to see it beating out the white boy finally Cooper Cup and no other Panthers but hey I'll take it defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald Nick Bosa on the Giants up there playing him out of position at defensive end in a fucking 3-4 defense no Panthers here 
here, except Brian Burns. I missed Brian Burns. He's at number four. That's pretty good. Rookie of the year goes to Edward and Edward Anthony of the Eagles. Why is that hard for me to say? Edward Anthony. That's a weird name. It sounds like an actor or something, or just like a rich person in general. I don't know. No Panthers up here though. And then defensive rookie of the year does go to Deshaun White. I mean, that's kind of a given. That's uh, not really surprising. He was a stud. Other than him, nobody else, but hey, we'll take it. But let's get into the playoffs here against the 49ers. So in the playoffs, we're going to be taking on the 49ers. Now we have a first of many scenario thingy, whatever. As always, got to play it cool. Uh, if you guarantee the win, uh, they're going to like get a ton of morale or whatever. I don't know. I think that's what it does, but we have a better record, better overall slightly. So let's see if we can take them down. I'm going to be honest. I'm not super confident, but I hope we can win. I just don't trust the Madden Sim. <laughs> All right, here we go in the divisional against the 49ers. Of course, a home game for us. Let's get it underway. So the 49ers are the first to score. We tie it up. It's 7-7, now 14-14. 21-14. It's been a high-scoring game so far. The 49ers have a slight lead going into halftime. We take it back in the third. They take it right back. We tie it up. They take another lead. This is a crazy high-scoring game, and we win. That would have been a crazy game to be at, and we do pull out the win against Trey Lance and the 49ers. It looks like Matt Corral had a monster game, as you would expect with us putting up 38 points, three touchdowns, one pick, 348 yards. That was an amazing game, and it's on to the next one. That is exactly who I thought it would be. We're going to be taking on the 11-6 Green Bay Packers. Now, they're an 82 overall to our 84, so we do have them in that department, but they do have a hot opponent scenario, so they must be on a pretty big win streak. Let's go be confident, as always. It would be huge if we could win this. We all get plus 10 break tackle, all that stuff for our defenses, so that's pretty huge. And we have some upgrades here. Ooh, Kareem Hunt. That could be pretty big. Let's go actually receiving back for him because obviously we use our running backs in the receiving game so much. But let's jump in against a Green Bay and see if we can take them down. Again, not super confident, but it would be amazing if we could win. All right, here we go against the Packers in the conference championship. So we know we don't score. I thought we were going to score. We do take an early 7-0 lead. We're up 10-0. They finally put points up and they put them up back to back. They're up 17 to 10 now. We tied up 17 going into half. It's still sitting at 17-17. They get a big score, 24-17. That looked like they went most of the field to get that, and it doesn't look like we're going to be able to score. It looks like a very shaky offensive performance in the second half will end this rebuild. Yeah, Matt Corral with two touchdowns, three interceptions, not great. But again, if you did enjoy today's video, like, sub, turn on notifications. If you want to be an OG and let me know what team to do next for a shout out because I do all my rebuilds and all my videos in general from suggestions so I appreciate if you do that but that is all thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys again in the next video goodbye